Yeah, hello everyone. This is your guy Benjamin Schnau again here with the second episode review of the new show We Are the Wave on Netflix. And we have a lot to talk about, but first of all, we're going to talk about Tristan, who finally shows everyone where he's living. We also see that Leah is breaking up with Bjorn finally, and we also see that the whole team is defeating the neo Nazis. Did and a lot more now in the second episode of We Are the Wave on Netflix here at After Bus TV in Los Angeles. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hello everyone, this is me again. You know me already by now, I guess, right? And we still have a lot to talk about. I mentioned already we talk about Tristan, right? We're gonna talk about the whole team and also about Leah. But let's start with Tristan because he did something completely unexpected to me. He was basically showing everyone where he's living. I mean, remember the very first episode, we see that he is living in this kind of a prison, like institute, right? To get reintegrated into the society as we now found out, which is very interesting to me because I never expected him to do that. But I feel like he feels more confident now in the team, in the group, to really just show them who he is and where he's coming from. And also, interesting enough, that he is from Hamburg originally, and he was also part of the left right movement, that was very interesting to me because I feel like he's definitely one of those guys who can pull that off. As we saw in the first episode, that he's really going against these neo-Nazis and really trying to fight for the right thing here, right? But also coming back to Leah, as I mentioned already, which was also very early for me, I thought it's gonna take a little longer until she's breaking up with Bjorn, but she already made very clear that she is not on the normal path anymore than anyone else in her city, in her town. She really decided, okay, I just want to fight for the right things. I want to be with that group. And you know what? I'm also going to leave my own boyfriend now because I know for a fact that he will never understand where I'm coming from, right? And she just does it right in the middle of the street, which was a very great scene, by the way. I don't know how you guys felt, but I was like, wow, she's really doing it while he's still driving to the tennis match. She's about to have a tennis match and she just kind of like says, you know what? I'm just going to cancel. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm out of here. I go back to the group. I just want to be with them and just want to basically celebrate my freedom for myself too. Because remember, she was kind of living in her own prison too, like Tristan is still doing. It's kind of a metaphor for her as well. That's how I see it. Because because she was living in this kind of like bubble of social media, you know, just doing what the society and the norm was telling her. But now she's breaking out finally. She's even leaving her boyfriend and coming together with the whole group. And that's a very amazing thing to see that she finally made her decision. And then coming back, she's leaving the car. She's running back on the street and she's running right into this fabric, this factory. And that's a really cool place. I mean, I really have to say, I wish we would have something like that. I'm not sure if we have something like that in LA, but I doubt it. But it was a really cool place to see. You know, you can all these kind of, can do these kind of activities with all these different people. And I really also felt when Rahim entered with the group, because he'd been there before, that he's also kind of, you know, having kind of a romance with the owner or with the kind of leader of this group at the factory. But as you can see, the story writers just gave us a little bit of this kind of feeling, but we still don't know where this journey goes to. But I feel there's something coming up in the upcoming episodes. And also coming to relationships and talking about romances, I also feel that Hagen is very interested now in Zazi, right? I mean, she's cutting up your, her hair. She really wants to have a complete change. I think she's also this kind of like extroverted introvert. That's how she she is to me. She's very much like introverted. She's not really talking a lot, but she definitely wants to show everybody from outside that she's a rebel too. She just wants to do whatever she feels like. And what is she doing? She goes back to her house, into the bathroom, and she's just shaving off her whole head. And it's just basically kind of bold almost. And that was so cool to see. And I think I mean, correct me, girls, ladies out there. I feel that's sometimes something that you do, right? If there's a change in your life that you kind of dye your hair or you basically have a new haircut or something, right? I mean, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, no offense, but that's how it seemed to me, right? So she's cutting her hair, she's coming back to the group and everyone obviously is surprised. Oh my God, you know, that's a new start, a new beginning for her too. So that was amazing to see. And I also wanted to point out that Hagen is a really cool guy. I have to say that over and over again, he has a very specific style, the actor, I'm talking about the actor who's portraying Hagen. I think he's a very good guy. Everyone is doing a great job, but he in particular, 
is really someone where I can see the emotion in his face. I think he's a very good actor. I haven't seen a lot of his stuff before. He was maybe kind of an unknown in Germany, but I think because of that role, he's gonna do a lot more in the future. So that was very great to see. And now coming back, out of a sudden, what we see at the factory, everyone having fun, out of a sudden, these neo-Nazis coming back into the picture and just wants to basically destroy the whole environment and the whole kind of scenario. And that was really team effort, teamwork. I think everyone was basically like holding together. They were just trying to defeat them and they made it work, which was a great scene, a great scenario, not just for the show, but I think like overall, there was kind of a metaphor for the whole scenario, which is also going on in Germany right now and in a lot of countries actually, right? I think that's a really great metaphor and really good scenario to show everyone, hey, don't give up, just, just hold together, you know, believe in what you believe and just go for it and just fight for it, right? Even if they feel strong at the beginning, trust me, if you're believing in yourself and you never give up and you basically hold together as a team, you can make it work. And that was a great scene to show everybody outside of Germany even. So that's really cool. So I really hope that you like it too. I wanna hear your appearance. Maybe you did some research on Google or something and have some background information now about Germany, Europe in general. So let me know what you think about the show because again, this show for me personally is not just a show, it's also very much about, you know, like political stuff, very much about social stuff. Like, I mean, Germany is a social state, but we still have these kind of people going on who believe in these old things that the Nazis and everyone was believing in and was going after. So tell me your thoughts. I would really like to hear it from non-German people as well, right? So I'm very interested. But before we end the episode and the review of today, I also wanted to talk about a very specific specific moment and we just see it a very little bit but when Tristan comes back to the prison to his institution he talks to a guy named Benny right maybe you remember that scene Benny is this guy also in this prison in this institution trying to get reintegrated into the society but he's also kind of a like a drug dealer that's what I feel right and Tristan goes to him and just ask him hey do you want to make business? Do you want to get some money? Do you want to have something? Because I know a lot of rich people at the school that I'm going to right now. And when he said that, I was like, wait a second. What is his real purpose of going to that school? Does he really just, you know, want to do what he believes in? He wants to be the rebel and wants to find his own people that he can trust and want to live a life with? Or is there like a bigger purpose for him? Because now it feels like that he's also trying to get connections to the rich people in a way, AKA Leah's family, right? Remember, she's coming from a very wealthy household. Or is that the reason for him, right? That's really something why I'm not sure yet. I really like doubt a little bit that he's just about to be the rebel and just trying to create his own team and group. So let me know what you think about that scenario because I still don't even know what he's dealing with. It sounds like cocaine, it sounds like drugs, any kind of drugs, but maybe it's something completely different. I mean, the story writers did a very good job in not telling us, right? I think you guys at home, the story writers, if you see it, you probably did that on purpose, I'm assuming, right? But still, I feel like it's very interesting to see that this is kind of an, like a different storyline a little bit now from Tristan's first appearance. I feel now I'm not sure about his character anymore because at the beginning, as I mentioned, he just felt like this rebel. And now I'm not sure if he has a bigger purpose for himself, even not just being the rebel and trying to, you know, escape with people and just change the society. So let me know what you think, right? I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for following every week. I really appreciate that. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's at Benjamin Schnau, like the dog, right? You know what I'm talking about. Thanks so much and see you next week for the review of the third episode. Bye-bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV.